For the first 28 years of my life, I did not play Kingdom Hearts. I knew of the series through magazine ads, and web articles, and game stores, and I heard about it from its many fans, who spoke of it in reverential tones and feverish rants. I'd lost count of the number of forum posts, Twitter threads, and opinion pieces I had come across, proclaiming it as the greatest series in gaming. It felt like Kingdom Hearts was more than just a game. It was a way of life. In January 2019, Kingdom Hearts 3 hit the gaming community as a decade-plus tsunami of hype. That crescendo of fan fervor exploded with memes, thought pieces, cosplays, exposés, anything and everything the gaming zeitgeist could manifest for a release this big. And, because I'm an idiot, I decided to wade into that frothing hysteria. Despite not knowing anything about the story, and having never touched any of the nine games that came before it, I decided to play Kingdom Hearts 3. I'm going to be honest, I didn't like the game. I found the story equal parts contrived and childish, and the gameplay pretty outdated. But that's not what this video is about. Instead, what I want to talk about is fandom, and the sometimes toxic relationship between a fan, the intellectual properties they love, and the companies who own them. Because what started as a dumb lark turned into a puzzling question. Why do people love Kingdom Hearts? The easiest and largest answer is because of Disney. Mickey Mouse and his corporate keepers are an IP juggernaut with multi-generational brand recognition across a variety of properties. Anything they put their characters in, from a third-rate cruise line to an offbeat Japanese video game, have a day one fan base of millions. The first Kingdom Hearts game came out in 2002, right in the sweet spot of Disney Pixar fandom. Dozens of animated, hand-drawn, and made-for-TV Disney movies had captured the attention of kids, tweens, and teens all around the world. Adding those same characters and settings to a video game made perfect business sense. And those same fans bringing their love for Disney movies to a Disney video game, that makes sense too. Where things start to get less clear is how much of that love is genuine. Does someone who loved the Hercules movie actually love the Hercules levels in Kingdom Hearts? Or is that passion based more on brand recognition than they'd like to admit? The relationship between an IP and a fan of that IP is inherently symbiotic. An IP exists as both a creative and commercial endeavor. It seeks to gain fans because of its aesthetic qualities, but also profit from those fans through its merchandising potential. A boring IP has no fans, and therefore nobody to buy tickets, t-shirts, and toys. But there is a threshold past which an IP doesn't have to be good anymore. I know that sounds cynical, but it's true. Once an IP has a dedicated fan base that will throw money at any future content, they don't have to worry as much about quality. All they have to do is include the same characters and settings. Somehow Palpatine returned. And while Kingdom Hearts is much more creative than the typical cash grab sequel, it still benefits from the follow-on fandom effect. I've met several people who only play Kingdom Hearts because they're self-admitted Disney fans. But that answer doesn't fully satisfy the question of why people love Kingdom Hearts. Or rather, it makes sense for the first game, and maybe even the 2005 sequel. But why play Kingdom Hearts 3, 14 years later and after seven interim spin-off games? My only grasp at an answer is an economics term, sunk cost fallacy. The Kingdom Hearts lore is notoriously convoluted. The story unfolds across all 10 games with multiple timelines and sometimes multiple versions of a single character. There are plenty of hours long YouTube videos recapping the story, and I'm betting you'd have to watch all of them to understand it. Getting invested in the story of Kingdom Hearts is not an easy endeavor. It requires playing all of the games, including the handheld spin-offs, while keeping mental spaghetti charts of allegiances and plot points. For fans of the series, Kingdom Hearts 3 probably feels not just like a conclusion, but also a burden. If you spent all these years and all this gameplay keeping up with the story, you probably feel like it'd be a waste to miss what happens next. That's the sunk cost fallacy thinking that the only way to turn a profit is to keep spending money. Or, in this case, the only way to enjoy Kingdom Hearts again is to continue playing it. I hope I haven't come across too harshly on Kingdom Hearts. While I personally didn't like the game, I understand why people love it. There's plenty of goofiness and pizzazz to hook the right people. But I do think it's a good idea to constantly question your own fandom. It's okay to love an IP, but you should understand why you love it. 
Is the latest release truly innovative and praiseworthy, or is it grasping at past enjoyment? Late-stage capitalism relies on blind consumption. Companies want you to spend your dollar based on recognition rather than worth. But that's the kind of behavior that kills creativity and replaces it with endless remakes and soulless merchandising. Be a smart and discerning fan. The IP you love will get better because of it. Oh, hello there. You've caught me practicing my reading. Boy, I sure wish I wasn't illiterate. Clearly you've enjoyed another Subpixel video. If you could like, comment, or subscribe, it lets us and it lets YouTube know that our content is worth watching. In the meantime, I'm going to get back to pretending.